Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy speaking. And for those of you who have recently uh, joined the Iggy Army, I want to thank you for coming along. And today I'm going to share with you some ultimate soldier figures by 21st Century Toys. Now, many of you, if not all of you, know that 21st Century Toys was founded in California, in Alameda, Alameda, California. And uh, they started in the, in the uh, late 90s producing Vietnam War era weapons and uniforms. They then switched over to World War II, and these are three of the figures they produced in the early 2000s. Now, the first one I'd like to share with you is this general officer, and uh, he's holding binoculars, and of course, he has his sidearm, and he looks remarkably like uh, Feldmarschall uh, Eric von Manstein. And uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they probably did that on purpose. Um, he's wearing the officer's cap. And instead of a silver braid along the brim there, it uh, has a gold braid. Um, and he should be wearing a white shirt. Uh, the reason he's got a blue one on is that's the only one I had available. So I put that on him and then put his coat back on. But eventually I plan to uh, replace that with a white shirt or try and close the tunic. I, I don't recall ha seeing a clasp to close the tunic. He's wearing a brown officer's belt. Uh, this particular belt was also used by the East German Army until the end of the Day Day Air, uh, Deutsches Demokratische Republik. Uh, he has, I don't know the, uh, the rifles in the way, but he's wearing a holster uh, with a Walther P-38 pistol. His tunic is in the felt, uh, field gray or feltgrau, and his trousers are in steingrau, stone gray. And he has, of course, the staff officer's red stripe on the side. Now, uh, von Manstein was captured by or surrendered to the British in Hamburg in 1945, and he testified at the Nuremberg trials. Uh, in defense of the general staff and of the army uh, for its conduct, con conduct, <laughs> for its conduct on the Eastern Front, uh, he was released, and then uh, the Soviets pressured the British into arresting him and putting him on trial, uh, which they did in 1947. He was found guilty of, I think, uh, eight of 18 counts. Of war crimes. Now, uh, he was given an 18 year sentence and then uh, he served about four years. And then, uh, because of uh, pressure from Winston Churchill and others, he was uh, released and died in 1973 at his home. I was in high school in 1973, but I don't remember Monstein. I think. Uh, Maybe he was one of those quiet kids. I don't know. Our next figure up is also Ultimate Soldier, at least beneath the surface. Uh, this camouflage SS uh, helmet and camouflage SS smock uh, I purchased from Cotswold Collectibles about 16 years ago. I don't know if they're still making those, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, this is... <coughs> Pardon me. I think I'm getting sick again. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, this is a uh, SS mock and helmet. And you would see this on the Eastern Front. It's considered a fall pattern. And I'm going to show you an illustration by Ron Volstad done in 1973 of the same camouflage pattern. And this Sturmmann is holding a uh, 
Panzerfaust. And he has the issue ankle boots and British styled uh, gaiters. And Ron Volstad did this illustration in 1973. Uh, Ron Volstad, by the way, is a Canadian illustrator and artist uh, who uh, specializes in military subjects and has done a lot of these illustrations for these books here. In this case, it's Waffen SS in Aktion. And this guy was dying to read it. Uh, these are put out by Squadron Books. I really like these a lot. I've got quite a number of different ones of this. But as you can see here, the SS had a wide range of camo available to them. Uh, this is the P dot pattern, which is, I think, one of my favorites. I like the splinter, too. Okay, so back to our figure. Uh, underneath it all, it's a uh, ultimate soldier uh, infantryman who came, I believe, on a blister card. And I put this uh, helmet cover a helmet with cover and smock on him. He's holding an MP43, which was uh, later designated the following year as a uh, Sturmgewehr or assault rifle 44. Now, this rifle was developed by uh, Hugo Schmeiser in 1940 is when he began uh, work on its design and it saw field trials in 1943 and was a huge success. The uh, soldiers really liked its reliability, its accuracy. Uh, it had a very low recoil, uh, even less than uh, K, a 98K would have. Uh, it featured a 30 round magazine. It had a range of about 427 yards, which is less than a rifle, but uh, the Ver not the Wehrmacht, the Heer uh, discovered they didn't really need something with a greater range because most battles were uh, fought in closer proximity. He's wearing the pattern 44 uniform under this and the ankle boots and gaiters, which were introduced as standard equipment in 1944 and probably due to uh, shortages of leather and materials such as that. Okay, my next figure up is an interesting figure by Ultimate Soldier because it was offered as a premium. Uh, you would mail in uh, I think it was proof of purchase that you cut off your carded uh, equipment packs and you would mail that in to Ultimate Soldier and they would send you this figure, which was like an exclusive. Well, an exclusive at the time. I don't know if they uh, released it later. Like, for instance, Lay's Potato Chips had an exclusive of the Spirit of Obi-Wan, which was a sort of light, translucent blue and it was not articulated it was just a solid figure and uh i think i bought three of those but anyway they uh released a figure of that figure does that even make sense iggy doesn't talk too clearly sometimes in fact what i'm seeing now is not too clear because the white is washing out into the white background anyway he's got a red armband uh, so that uh, he wouldn't be uh, subjected to friendly fire. He's got an e-tool tucked into his um, smock, and the smock was reversible, as were the trousers. On one side was white, and on the interior side was uh, a mouse gray, which was uh, is similar to this color here. Uh, he's wearing jack boots, and he's got one of his... Uh, let's move this figure for just a moment. He's got a grenade, Handgranaten, tucked into his boot. My German is terrible. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I also forgot to mention to you that the uh, Sturmgewehr 44, uh, they produced about 
424,000 of them uh, during the uh, uh, last year of the year and a half of the war. I, I also neglected to show you the his equipment here. This is pretty cool. He's got a shelter half, which also doubled as a uh, a God. What do they call it? A rain. Uh, <laughs> doing it again. A shelter, not a shelter half. It is a shelter half, but they, a uh, poncho. They also use them as uh, ponchos. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. And he's got a mess kit and a bread bag over here. Uh, bayonet and bayonet frog. And there's his e-tool. There should be a canteen somewhere on this guy. He's got another hand grenade in his belt. So let me take this figure down for just a moment so we can get a closer look at this. Now, what you don't see here is he's wearing uh, slung over his shoulder a PPSH-41 Soviet submachine gun. And on the front there is a canvas uh, holder for ammunition holder for the drum magazine. Now, it could... The uh, PPSH-41 could either have a banana clip, I got the hiccup, sorry, of uh, 31 rounds or a uh, round magazine with 71 rounds. Now this, uh, I'm going to take him down to show you the weapon. I have to be careful. Last night I attempted to make this video 21 times and I finally gave up and went to bed a little after midnight because the figures kept falling over. But there's the PPSH-41 without a magazine attached to it. There's his water bottle and gas canister. His bread bag. And there you go. Now I'm starting. Uh, the The problem with this figure is that it's very difficult to pose it so that it stands upright, as all of them were. In fact, at one point, well, see, that is exactly what I was talking about. Apparently, a uh, sniper got him. Uh, here's his helmet, and they have a little X there, as and you know why. But this foam inside here, if you don't uh, attach his chin strap, uh, this foam will cause it to sit up on his head a little bit, and it looks kind of strange. And since all the figures have since been drilled in the head by a sniper, I'm going to show you his haircut. I used to wear my hair like this when I was doing uh, World War I German reenacting. And I had myself a uh, mustache, sort of a handlebar mustache with my hair cut like this. And this woman said, why on earth do you look like that? And this other guy that was in my group turned to her and said, he looks cool. And she said, well, I don't, I don't think so. Well, he has to conform to societal norms and not look like that. Anyway... So I guess societal norms in the reenacting community is a little different and also unappealing to women, I discovered. Anyway, Iggy's unappealing, so it's okay. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. Uh, this is video 22, and even though everything has fallen over, I've decided to just keep going and uh, and stay calm and carry on. Uh, the Queen would approve. Anyway, that's all I got for you for this video. I'm going to show you another one in just a few minutes. Uh, I need to get these done and get these boxes back to storage before uh, Thanksgiving because I want to start setting up the Christmas display. So this is Iggy saying thank you for getting Iggy with it. Let's show you all the guys once more. Is he going to stand up? I don't know. 
And here's my Eric von Manstein. And he is not standing up. Here's Eric von Manstein. Did I mention to you that he uh, was part of the Nuremberg? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. What's the big idea? I don't know, Mo. Okay, well, he's sort of standing up. Anyway, this is saying, uh, this is Iggy saying, thanks for getting Iggy with it and witnessing the downfall of the Third Reich right before your eyes. Uh, I'm going to hit the dusty trail. I'll see you guys back at the ranch. All right, guys, see you later. Take care.